Hi, welcome to Bookie, which unlocks big ideas from world bestsellers in audio, text, and mind map. Please download Bookie at Apple Store or Google Play with more features. Get your free mind snack now. Today we'll unlock the book How to Win Friends and Influence People. Many of us are familiar with or have even read this book. It has continued to gain popularity and receive acclaim from readers around the world. It has also been published in many editions. Data shows that this book has sold tens of millions of copies worldwide, a truly remarkable number in the history of publication. It provides people with guidelines for dealing with others, in addition to sharing many ideas about how to live a happy life. Numerous people have benefited from it. Ever since Carnegie revealed the secret to harmonious relationships to many people around the world, other books on the subject of interpersonal relationships have emerged. Due to his enormous influence, Carnegie has been praised as one of the greatest experts in self-help and interpersonal relationships. It may be hard to imagine that while Carnegie is now a revered mentor in the self-help industry, he used to suffer a lot from his inability to effectively deal with people. Carnegie was not born a genius of social skills. He learned from his own personal experiences and turned them into assets. Carnegie was born in the 1880s in a small town in Missouri. His family was poor, so he was always hungry and cold. Due to malnutrition, little Carnegie was rather skinny and short, making his ears which were disproportionately big compared to his head seemed even larger. Because of his big ears, little Carnegie was often teased by his classmates. One day, he got into a fight with a boy in his class. He said something very mean to the boy, who became so furious that he threatened to cut off Carnegie's ears. Carnegie was terrified. In the next few days, he kept worrying about his ears being cut off. He was even too scared to fall asleep, fearing that his ears would be cut off in his dreams. But this was not his only concern. When he was a kid, Carnegie would dwell on anxieties to the point of tears. He worried about so many absurd things, for example, being buried alive like a seed, getting killed by a lightning strike, or going to hell after dying. He also worried that no girl would ever want to marry him, or that he would be kidnapped by aliens. Later on, Carnegie realized that most people's worries were not necessary, because there was a 99% chance that they wouldn't happen. After a long period of anxiety and lack of confidence when growing up, he attended the State Teachers College in Warrensboro, Missouri. Here, he took an interest in debating, and became very fond of it. So, he attended debates and public speaking competitions frequently, painstakingly honing his speaking skills. He won the majority of contests in which he participated, and gained great confidence from giving speeches. Gradually, he realized that this could be his lifelong career. Afterward, Carnegie started to give inspirational speeches around the world. He wrote many self-help books, like How to Win Friends and Influence People, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, and How to Enjoy Your Life and Your Job. His courses teaching interpersonal skills started to be held around the world. A worried little boy with low self-esteem finally became the great mentor of self-help we know today. The book we're going to unlock today How to Win Friends and Influence People is Carnegie's most influential work. Next, we'll unlock it in three sections. Part 1, Techniques for Dealing with People. Part 2, Applying the Techniques in Social Interactions. Part 3, From Society to Family. First, let's look at the fundamental techniques in dealing with interpersonal relationships. Here is one principle for dealing with interpersonal relationships. If you want to gather honey, don't kick over the beehive. This statement actually reveals a fatal weakness of humanity. In the face of what they deem unfair, people tend to furiously criticize out of instinct, people also believe that criticism can stop mistakes from happening. Well, actually, this idea is deeply flawed. Criticism is useless. It only provokes resistance. Furthermore, criticism hurts the other person's self-esteem, arousing resentment. Burris Frederick Skinner, the world-famous psychologist studied this issue and argued that criticism would only irritate people, and was not at all helpful for solving a problem. 
Abraham Lincoln used to be a very critical young man. Using criticism as his weapon, he often denounced others ruthlessly. Once he almost lost his life for it. It was the autumn of 1842. Lincoln wrote to the Springfield Journal to ridicule a vain, pugnacious politician called James Shields. After seeing this article, Shields was so outraged that he challenged Lincoln to a duel, and Lincoln begrudgingly agreed. So the two met on the river bank of the Mississippi River. Although he was obviously not good at dueling, Lincoln was prepared to fight to the death. Luckily, the duel was called off by others at the last minute saving Lincoln's life. Lincoln learned a hard lesson about harshly criticizing others through this incident. After that, he never criticized anyone anymore. During the Civil War, a general hesitated and refused to follow Lincoln's command. As a result, they missed a good opportunity to attack. Lincoln was infuriated, and he wrote a bitter letter condemning the general. But in the end, he never sent the letter. He knew too well the consequences of criticism, so he always followed his principle of not criticizing anyone. Therefore, we should always keep in mind that any fool can criticize, condemn, and complain, and most fools do. But it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Now that we've identified the most fundamental principle of dealing with people, let's talk about the secrets of building interpersonal relationships. If you want someone to be willingly at your service, you must give them what they want. John Dewey, an American philosopher pointed out that the deepest urge in human nature is the desire to be important. Carnegie agreed with this statement and elaborated on it throughout his book. People naturally crave approval and praise from others. They want to feel that they are important to others. Such a desire is as fundamental as eating and drinking, but they seldom pay attention or even realize it. Nevertheless, it's this desire to be important that separates humans from other animals. Thanks to this unique human characteristic, even someone like William Shakespeare, the literary giant tried to add luster to his name by procuring a coat of arms for his family. Or Ferdinand Magellan for example, he set out for his voyage around the globe despite great uncertainty and life-threatening risks. Even George Washington wanted to be called his mightiness, the President of the United States. So, it's not only ordinary people, great people also long to be considered important. It's certainly very satisfying when people get approval and attention from others. But if this need is not met, people might establish an unrealistic view in their heads. The contradiction between their strong desire and reality might give them delusions, hallucinations, or other mental illnesses like schizophrenia. In such cases, doctors often feel that it's almost too cruel to intervene and treat the patient, because the patient is happier in his or her own world. All these examples show how important it is to appreciate others, and make them feel as though you are interested in them. Genuine appreciation is always the key to interpersonal relations. But appreciation never equals flattery. Appreciation is always sincere from the heart, while flattery is fake, hypocritical, and benefit-driven. People have to be clear that they are pursuing a positive way of life, and not motivated by despicable ploys to take advantage of others. If you want others to truly be at your service, you must genuinely appreciate them and be interested in them. If you want to persuade people, then you must find out what they really need. Stand in their shoes. As Dale Carnegie said in the book, he who can do this has the whole world with him. He who cannot walks a lonely way. There are already more than enough greedy selfish people in the world. Empathetic, kind-hearted people are so rare and thus invaluable. We often run into reckless salespeople who make every effort to sell us their products, despite making it clear that we don't need it at all. This behavior always irritates us, as it's obvious that they only care about their sales performance and profits. Whether you need it or not is simply not their concern. However, the best salespeople always put themselves in the shoes of their customers. When customers can feel sincerity and respect, they're willing to pay for the product. Therefore, in any relationship, we should always remember to consider how the other person can benefit, while still trying to achieve our goal. Only a win-win situation can get us there. Okay, that concludes the first part. In this part, we learn some basic principles for dealing with people. Don't judge and criticize easily, 
appreciate others genuinely, take the other person's interests into consideration and make it a win-win situation. Today we are just sharing limited content. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. Get your free mind snack now.